Welcome to my first speed reviews video. So I started posting on YouTube on July 16th. So most of August I was buying and trying a lot of new products. Now I have like done a ton of like dedicated new release videos and there are some things that I've tried in those videos that I haven't really tested well enough yet to really give my like full opinion on. So I'm not going to include those in today's video even though maybe you've seen me try them on in other videos. I'm still really testing them out and I don't know exactly how I feel about them just yet. So there are a ton of other things that I tried in the month of August that I did have enough time to really test out that I wanted to talk about. So I'm going to go through each of the items and I'm going to start with like how I would normally apply them to my face, getting all the way to like the end. I don't really have any setting sprays. I did buy one new setting spray for the month of August, but I really didn't get a chance to test it out. I try and make sure that I've worn everything at least like five times and I have a real opinion about how I think it performs and whether I like it or don't like it before I want to do these speed reviews. So there were 53 items that I had in this like speed reviews roundup. There, there are actually more than 53, but some of the items are like the same. They either came in a set or they were like different shades of the same item. So I did count them as one. Let's just jump right into it. We'll start with like base products and then we'll move on into complexion. So I did a full face of Glossier and I purchased this priming moisturizer. So this is the original priming moisturizer. One of the things that I really love about a primer is that it actually is like a lighter weight formula. It doesn't mess with mesh with the foundation, um, and it, but it gives me some hydration. I'm not really looking at for anything that like fills in my pores, although that's sometimes kind of nice. I prefer something that's a little bit more hydrating because I have really dry skin. So I loved this. I have not been able to put this down. I have been using it consistently and every foundation that I have used on top of it has worked so well. It is the favorite product that I purchased from Glossier in that full face of Gloss trying new makeup from Glossier. It is like fast becoming one of my favorite primers right now. I did try quite a few foundations in the month of August. Some of them I'm still testing out so I did not include them in today's video but I will include them probably in next month as I get more time to test them out. So the first foundation that I have is the Best Skin Ever foundation from Sephora. When this came out about a year and a half ago I heard that it had really good reviews that it worked really well for a lot of different people and when I did a full face of the Sephora collection when the Best Skin Ever concealer launched just last month I believe in August sometime I wanted to try a full face of the Sephora collection so I do have quite a bit of items from the Sephora collection in today's speed reviews. But this turned out to work so well for me, I could not put it down. In the entire month of August, I was using this over and over and over again. When I knew that I was wanting my makeup to look really good, but also break down well throughout the day, I was grabbing for this foundation. I, I really, really loved this. This was a solid, solid foundation for me. It's now one of my favorite foundations. And again, I, I just cannot stop wearing it. The next product I have was the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. It's a very watery formula. I don't know if you can kind of see it moving around in there, but it was a pretty nice skin tint. It was probably the second or third thing that I liked the best from my Glossier haul. It's a very, very sheer coverage, but it looked really good. I mean, it's nice for that kind of makeup, no makeup days. It just basically took away my redness without really providing too much coverage. It but again, I didn't find it breaking apart on my nose or creating issues for me in my T-zone, which a lot of foundations do. So I really did like this one for that just like really sheer application of coverage. I found that it was a nice skin tint. Another foundation that I tried that has become very, very popular over the summertime, and this probably launched sometime in July, but I didn't pick it up and try it until August, was the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. So this foundation unfortunately didn't work for me. It says that it's a medium like buildable coverage, but it was too full coverage for me. It actually, no matter how light a layer I put on or how well I primed my face, it really just caused a lot of like caking issues and breaking apart in the center of my face. It just didn't look good. It looked too heavy. It sat funny on my face. It just didn't work well for me and I didn't like it. And because it was so popular and a lot of people said that it was such a good foundation and it worked so well for them that I continued giving this a shot. But every single time I 
tried it it just didn't work well I can't always explain why foundations work on other people but don't work well on me it just is the way it is maybe it's because I have extremely dry skin I'm not sure but I tried it in every way imaginable and it still didn't look good on me so that one is is not a recommendation for me and my dry skin another foundation that I tried this August was the Dr. Jart this is the premium BB beauty balm so this is a reformulation to Dr. Jart's original beauty balm that I don't know when it first launched several years ago at this point and it has worked really well for me this was the second foundation or complexion product that I reached for just behind the Sephora best skin ever so this actually provides um, a pretty decent amount of coverage and it has a very radiant finish it has a very balmy texture but it sat really well on my skin and it looked really good and very hydrating when I was like outside and I was in the humidity it didn't slip off of my face it really stayed like really well and just felt really good and wore down nicely throughout the day it did not separate around the center of my face no caking issues it layered on top of like any primer no primer um, it was just a really really good one so I'm a huge fan of this a huge recommendation I never tried the original formula but I like this reformulation a lot this was a really really good one for me I did try a full face of she glam products and I did try two different foundations from them but the one that I did wear quite a bit over the month of August this is the Skinfluencer Full Coverage Foundation Balm. It is a thicker consistency. I did find that even though this is a more full coverage foundation, which I tend to stay away from most of the time, and my skin is just pretty particular when it comes to different foundations, I did find that this worked quite well. It is a pretty hydrating formula. It's balmy. It's very similar to the KVD Good Apple Foundation in that it feels like it's a very oil-based formula but it sat really well on my skin. You know, if I used a brush and kind of applied an even layer across my face, it looked really good and it wore really well throughout the day. So I did really like this. This was another one when I wanted something more full coverage for the summer that I reached for. I did really like this. So the final item in complexion products was the new Patrick Ta Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. So I'm not gonna hold this one <laughs> up because it's such a reflective surface but this was my most recent complexion purchase this was just recently launched and this came with um, a foundation and then a finishing powder at the bottom I have not been able to put this down I wasn't sure what to expect with Patrick Ta's first complexion launch and I wasn't really sure what to expect with the level of coverage for the actual cream foundation itself and then the finishing powder whether or not those two were gonna pair well or whether I was gonna like one more over the other it turns out that the foundation is actually a very light to medium coverage it was such a beautiful natural looking foundation it looked beautiful on the skin the finishing powder was some of the best finishing powder I have in my entire collection it blurred my under eyes and really looked airbrushed everywhere I applied it I loved it I was going back into the finishing powder even when I wasn't using the cream foundation that's how much I really really liked this so since I got it I have been using it non-stop has nothing but good things to say it is not the longest lasting cream foundation but it is just so beautiful Beautiful on the skin and mm, the finishing powder on top of it the two pair beautifully together but they can also be used individually and on their own on their own they they carry just as much weight as they do together so I'm a huge fan of this I love this so moving on into concealers I did try two new concealers the first one that I tried was the new best skin ever concealer from Sephora I did not find that this caked under my eyes even though it's marketed as a full coverage concealer I found that it spot concealed really well I found that a little bit went a really long way and I thought it was a more lightweight formula so it didn't crease under my eyes it didn't give me any trouble um, this was just a really really good concealer I equate it to the success that I had with the foundation just really really nice formulation it wore well it broke down well I'm a huge fan of this concealer highly recommend from me the other concealer 
that I purchased and have been using mainly in the month of the end of August, maybe even like the beginning of September, but it's another one that I haven't been able to put down. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. So it definitely has a radiant finish and this claims to be medium coverage. I did find that I had to build it up and use multiple layers of this before it was really what I would consider medium coverage. And then when I applied two layers of the concealer or two applications, that it did crease a little bit under my eye, but if I was quick enough to set this down, it didn't continue creasing under my under eyes anymore. Um, it just looks really beautiful. I like that light to medium finish. I really don't like something that's too, too full coverage if the full coverage means that it's drying. This also very, very hydrating. My under eyes were so soft and smooth after using this. I was like touching my under eyes throughout the day and I was like wow they are just really really smooth after using this. So then I continued to use this and I was only applying one application of this under my under eyes and it was no longer creasing. So I really liked that concealer. So moving on to setting or finishing powder, I really only tried one that I feel comfortable talking about right now in the month of August and this was the Sephora Micro Smooth Multitasking Baked Face Powder. This was an extremely smoothing formula. It was so nice. I have so many issues with powders just being too dry. And even when they claim to be more finely milled or to be really smoothing or to be very lightweight, sometimes I can make them a liar out of that claim with my super dry skin. And I did not find that with this. It was, again, one that I just kept reaching for. So again, another huge recommendation for me. Okay, so moving on to brow products. And this one, again, is from the Sephora collection. This is the Waterproof Retractable Brow Pencil. So it's very similar tip to my favorite brow pencil, which is the Benefits Precisely My Brow. It has a very, very fine tip. I did get this in the shade Taupe, but I do love its waxy formula. I do love that it is waterproof because I'm pretty rough on my makeup throughout the day. I like things that really claim to be waterproof or that claim to be long lasting without being too drying and I found that this was a really really good option. I continued to reach for this even though this was a shade that was probably a little bit too light for me. I did get it in the shade Taupe. I do try and buy shades that are a little bit lighter when it's a brow product that I've never tried before because the undertones can be very very different depending upon the brand and how they formulate the brow pencil and oftentimes those that are in like a medium brown turn out to be too dark for me. So I did find that this was a a half shade too light, maybe a shade too light, but I really, really liked the formula. And I even said in my full face of Sephora collection video that I could see that this would be a more affordable option to the benefit precisely my brow. So I really, really did like this brow pencil. Moving on to bronzers, I did try four new bronzers that I feel comfortable talking about for the month of August. So the first one that I tried was the new Ultra Matte Powder Bronzer from Melt Cosmetics. So this is, I've noticed, gotten quite a bit of like bad reviews, especially on Sephora, because it was just too warm toned a bronzer. Now, I definitely agree that it is a very warm toned bronzer, but I found that if I went with a really light hand, it looked really good on me. I think that it was probably a little bit too warm toned for maybe my forehead, and this being the lightest shade, there really isn't much you can do about the warm tonedness of this. You can't go lighter than this one, which is in the shade Santa Barbara, but I found that the application was nice. I don't agree that it's not a good bronzer. I think that it was very velvety, very creamy. I love a matte powder bronzer, and I think this applied really nicely. I didn't have any real issues with it. I did like this formula, and while I do think that it was more of a warm toned bronzer, it was more red undertoned than it was orange in the warmth that it gave, so it did perform for me in that way, and I think this would be a really good bronzer for the fall for just creating that kind of like reddish undertone warmth to your face. So I was a fan of this, I didn't dislike it. 
Another bronzer that I tried was from a brand that I had never tried before that I tried in the month of August and this is from Make Beauty. This was a new release for them. This was their Skin Mimetic Micro Suede Bronzer. So when I first picked this up, I thought that this shade would be too dark for me and maybe not necessarily too warm, but definitely too dark, but that didn't turn out to be the case. It was very blendable. It was a very buildable formula, not overly pigmented, and it wasn't too warm a shade in that it wasn't too like orange tone. I thought that this was a great matte powder bronzer formula. I really have been enjoying the products that I picked up from Make Beauty. It wore well throughout the day and it's again another huge recommendation from me. Another bronzer that I tried that I haven't been able to stop using is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Fresh Wear Bronzer. So this is a soft matte bronzer. Now this looked really neutral. This is in the shade 200 Fair. And when I applied it, it actually did give a good amount of warmth to the face. But it was the kind of warmth that is more red in undertone than it is orange. It did not look unnatural on the skin. I have not worn this that many times, but I can already tell you that it's a great formula. It's buildable, it's blendable, it wore really well, and it is a waterproof formula, which I absolutely love because again, I'm really, really tough on my makeup throughout the day and I sweat a lot here in Florida with the humidity. So this was, this was a good one. L'Oreal in the bronzer department has never let me down. Love it. So finally for bronzers or contours, I picked up for um, the full face of Sephora, the colorful contour. Now while this wasn't really a bronzer, that's kind of how I use it. I did use it a little bit to sculpt, kind of like under my chin, along my chin line, that sort of thing but it was a very creamy, buildable formula. It even comes with a small mirror in here. I thought it was a great neutral tone. It looked really, really good on my fair skin. I found that it was a buildable, blendable formula. This is the only contour, powder contour that I have in my entire collection. All my other contours are in a either cream or liquid format. So this was actually really nice. I've never used a powder contour before. I think it performed really well. There are some really expensive contours like powder contours on the market and I think for an affordable option this is a really really good one. I did try one cream bronzer. It was from Merit Beauty. This is the first time that I've tried any Merit Beauty products. So this recently did launch. This is a new launch for Merit. So when I first saw the pictures of the launch for this particular bronzer, I saw that the lightest shade that they had was too warm toned for me. I really don't like a super warm toned bronzer. If it is warm toned, I prefer that it be a little bit more red than it is holding more orange and so I picked up this shade which is in the shade clay and this is the second to lightest shade because it is a more neutral toned bronzer it actually worked really really well for my fair skin what I really really like about this is the fact that there was more than one shade that would work for my fair skin when I'm looking at formulations or colors in the launches that a lot of companies put out for bronzers usually the lightest shade is the only shade that will work for my skin tone but in this case because this is the second lightest shade i like that they came out with one option that was a little bit more warm toned and one that was a little bit more neutral toned like this one I was not displeased with this bronzer. I really, really liked it. It was very blendable, very creamy, and it has definitely made me consider wanting to try more of Merit Beauty's products. So this was another good one for me. Okay, so moving on to blushes, there were quite a few blushes that I tried over the summer, and I promise not everything that I love, even though a lot of these products I do love. There are things in here that I cannot recommend. So I'll talk about one because it's right in the middle. It is the Kaja Play Bento Stack. So it has a cream bronzer, a powder highlighter, and a powder blush. I'll talk about the bronzer first. So I really, really like the bronzer. I find it's very creamy. I find that it is a pretty good neutral tone and very easy to work with. I don't think it's the longest lasting cream bronzer that I have, but it is very nice and easy to apply. I'm not the biggest fan of the blush and highlighter. The blush just isn't a color that I wear on an everyday basis. I don't wear very many pinky tones. So while it is nice and generally pinky tones look good on my fair skin, I just don't prefer it. I prefer something that's a little bit more either mauve or orange toned. That's just my preference. So it's a little bit pinky for me. And while the highlighter is very nice in the stack, I think that it fades off very, very quickly. And I have a lot of other highlighters that I think are 
more affordable that actually last quite a bit longer than this does. So I would say that it's a decent stack, but my favorite thing in here is probably the cream bronzer. And I would say if they sold a stack that was in a shade blush that I liked a little bit more, I would definitely like this quite a bit more. But it's very, very good for travel. It's compact and it performed well. Next, I have a cloud paint. This is a liquid blush from Glossier. Again, picked this up when I picked up my full face of Glossier, and I really, really liked this product. I would say this was probably number two or three in like the top items that I tried from Glossier that I really liked. I thought this had a beautiful consistency. I did not find it to be too sticky, and that's usually what I worry about when it is a liquid blush because I find that a lot of times these, these can be sticky or just not dry down or they're not really safe to set even with the powder because they take so long to dry down. I didn't find that with this. I found that it was very pigmented, very easy to apply. You didn't need to build it up. I really liked the color on this and I found that it was for a good base to it. So I didn't have any issues with this blush. I really, really like it. So I can see why those are popular. I have really been enjoying it. One blush that I am really not enjoying and I will be decluttering from my collection was the M Cosmetics Serum Blush. So this is not a new release by any means, not all of these are. And I really, really wanted to try the M Cosmetics Serum Blush because the packaging was just really cute. And I have heard quite a bit of good things about this blush, but for me, it was not my favorite. Um, it was just way too sheer. It was just way too sticky. I found that the applicator was not my favorite, even though you're supposed to pump it a couple of times, but just how sticky this formula was. And when it's really, really sticky like that and takes a long time to dry down, it's not my favorite. And I don't really love setting my liquid and cream products. I will if I can, but if it just remains sticky on the cheeks, you know, it's not really something that I want to take a brush to. So I was not a fan of this blush. I believe that it is a very popular product. It's just not for me. Another cream blush that I tried over the summer was the e.l.f. Luminous Blush. So I did a cream and liquid ranking of all of my blushes, and I think this ranked at night number three or number four. I think that this luminous formula was beautiful on the skin. I liked that it had like a semi-radiance, but it still dried down. It was very easy to apply, very easy to blend in, had a good amount of base or pigmentation to it, and I didn't find that over some of my other like shimmery cream blushes that this emphasized any texture on my cheeks so it was very very nice i highly enjoyed this shade it is in the shade maui it is a very like neutral cool toned blush um, i thought that it lasted a good amount of time and it's a really inexpensive product so i never tried the original putty blushes i only tried the luminous version but i really really liked this formula another blush that i tried over the summer was she glam this was one of their mousse blushes so this is the cosmic crystal mousse blush in aha uh -huh honey it's almost like a baked formula, but it isn't. It's just a very, very moussey, like micro suede texture. It has like a cooling sensation um, when you touch it. It was a little bit difficult to build up for me. I liked the principle behind this particular blush and the fact that it was a little bit different than just a normal powder. But I did find that I had to really, really dig my brush in here to really pick anything up. It was much easier to swatch than it was to apply with an actual brush so I like this it's just not my absolute favorite it does take a little bit of extra working to get it to really build up to the pigmentation that I like but I do like that it is different that it is a mousse blush I don't have anything else like this texture and consistency in my collection so I am glad that I picked it up I just do have to work a little bit harder to get this to show up at the pigmentation that I prefer Another blush that I tried from the Sephora collection was the Colorful Matte Blush. So this was an okay blush. Um, I would not say that it knocked my socks off. Again, it is one that has a mirror on the inside. It's not the longest lasting. It's not the most pigmented. It's not my favorite blush in my collection that does anything that's really stand out, but it was a nice blush. I think overall the Sephora collection does a really good job with the exception of one type of product that I just really don't care for. It just has kind Kind of a like B minus rating from me. Now moving on, the rest of these are either liquid or cream blushes. I did try quite a few blushes over the summer. This next one here is the Cheek Freak Blush from About Face. 
This is a matte cream blush. I found that the pigmentation on this was so nice. It applied so easily. I took like a damp sponge, like the back of it, and just tapped it onto my cheeks and it was beautiful. Just a couple of bounces on the cheek and that was all I needed for application. I found that this lasted a really long time. It was very comfortable, like I said, easy to apply. It was very buildable, very blendable. I just really, really enjoyed this. I thought that About Face did a really good job with the formulation on this and I was quite enjoying this. So I'm glad that I added this to my collection and this is one formulation that I could definitely see picking up more shades because I did like it so much. One of my favorite cream blushes that I tried over the summer was the newly packaged Honest Beauty Cream Cheek and Lip Color. So I could not put this down over the summer. It is a very emollient formula, but this formula, even though it's very emollient, still dries down on the cheek. It applies so nicely and easily with a sponge. It lasts all day. This was just such a really fun color, really fun formulation. It had really, really good quality it's pretty inexpensive I did try the other honest beauty blushes that she had before this came out and I wasn't a huge fan of them I thought they were okay I don't know if this is a reformulation or just re new packaging but I say that I enjoy this much more than I did the other honest blushes that she had launched previously so I would venture to guess that this is a reformulation I did include this in my cream and liquid blush rank and I think this came in somewhere in the top three. This is a really, really good formula. I'm so glad that I have this. It's one I just cannot stop reaching for. Another cream blush that I tried over the summer was the Melt Cosmetics. These are the cream blush lights. So Melt Cosmetics, I think launched these last year at some point. I picked these up when the Ultra Matte Bronzer came out. So I did pick up two shades um, as they looked pretty promising. This was in the shade Honey Thief, which is a more coral tone, and this one in Pink Sand, which is kind of like a mauve pink. Uh, these are such high recommendations from me. They are some of the longest lasting cream blushes that I have. They're so easy to apply. They're quite pigmented. They have a really good base to them. They were so comfortable to wear and they had a really radiant finish but dried down almost instantly and they kind of felt like a cream to powder formula. So I, I really, again, with these, could not stop using them. I have a ton of blushes in my collection and could have reached for anything, but I kept grabbing for these. I love both of the shades. I love the formula. I love that they're long lasting and easy to apply. So I'm a huge fan of these cream blush lights from Melt. So the next one up is the liquid blush from She Glam and it had the um, like puff ball applicator. I really, really enjoyed this. I don't love this shade. I thought it would be more mauve -y than it was pink, but it came out more pink on me, which really isn't my favorite shade. Personally, I loved the application on this and the contour. I really haven't used the contour enough, so I didn't want to put it in today's video, but maybe it will go in like next month's speed reviews. But I think these are fantastic. I think these last a really good amount of time. I think the application is super, super convenient, super easy to apply. You dot it on your face three times and it will blend out with a brush almost instantly. So it's very no hassle liquid product. I prefer a cream product but because of this applicator I find that I really do enjoy using this liquid product. I think that having kind of in this potted format as opposed to a puff applicator where you squeeze the tube makes it really really convenient for application but I also loved the way that this looked. I thought it was radiant but it also dried down. It was very very nice so that is a huge recommendation. Very inexpensive product. So when Make Beauty came out with their um, micro suede bronzer, I also went to their website and placed an order for one of their gel tints. So this is a cream blush. It is a very vibrant shade. They have mostly vibrant shades in this particular um, gel tint line. And so when I got it, I thought maybe it would be too bright, but it actually is a very beautiful like coral 
corally orange shade on me it was so easy to apply with a sponge it's pretty emollient it lasted a really long time and it did dry down quick enough that I set it down with powder and it looked beautiful and lasted all day long it lasted through a nap it just lasted through until the evening which is very unusual I only have about a handful of blushes in my collection that will do that so I highly highly enjoyed this both of the things that I picked up from Make Beauty were recommendations from me. The final blush that I have is a cream blush. So this is from She Glam from their Sunday Picnic collection. This is the Cheeky Color Jam in Afternoon Peach. So it has a very like whipped mousse formula, but it's so easy to apply, so comfortable. Because it's that like moussey formula and it feels very whipped, it feels like a cream to powder finish. So it dries down really quickly. It just left like a beautiful, almost semi-matte finish on the cheeks and I really really liked the color. I am really into liquid and cream products that don't require a lot of hassle from me for application and I found that with this so I did really really enjoy this. Again pretty inexpensive, a moussey texture cream blush that I don't have really uh, like anything else in my collection so I quite enjoyed this. I did try four new highlighters that I want to talk about in the month of August. The first was the Golden Hour from the Sephora collection. So this is a highlighting duo and what makes this quite unique is that it has what they refer to as a high beam and a low beam and what that means is there are more like shimmers in the high beam and less in the low beam. Why I think this is a really unique idea and not that I've seen in any other highlighting format is that you can get a shinier finish if that's something you're looking for for the day or you can go for something that's more lit from within, more skin-like, more natural looking. Smart way to market this. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was another one that I just kept reaching for over and over again. I think again, Sephora Collection did a really, really good job with this and I quite enjoy it. So that's a recommendation for me. I did pick up the new shade or one of the new shades that Bobbi Brown launched in their highlighting powder. I did have Pink Glow, but I picked up the Peach Glow shade. Shade. So the Pink Glow shade is one of my favorite highlighters in my entire collection. Well, it's one of the most beaming highlighters I own. It lasts a really long time and it literally makes my cheekbones look wet. So I picked up the Peach Glow. I don't think that it was as peach as I was kind of hoping for. This marbleized finish looks more pearl and there's a tiny bit of peach in the corner. So it wasn't as peach a color as I was hoping for, but the formulation is fantastic. Again, it's just very wet on the the cheek it lasts a really long time and it beams like to the sky so it's a really really great formula I just wish that it had a little bit more peach in the marbling than it does I did try one of the new House Labs Bio Radiant Gel Powder Highlighter. I really, really do like it. I don't think it's as long as lasting as the Bobbi Brown Highlighter, but I think it's a really good one. I'm glad that I've added this to my collection. I can definitely see why this is popular. I have tried one of her other baked highlighters that she had before she reformulated and went into Sephora, and it is very nice, but I definitely like this better. and just looks really good on the skin, so I thought she did a really good job with the reformulation. I really liked this. Finally, in the highlighting department, I also picked up a cream highlighter from Tarte. This is the Marajuka Juicy Glow. This is one that I did not like at all. Um, I don't think the formula is necessarily bad. I just feel like this particular shade was not good for me. It is more of a um, peachy shade then I really prefer and so every time I applied this I was finding that it was like meshing in with my blush and almost making it invisible to the eye I couldn't tell that it was there I couldn't tell that I had applied it I think that it's very like creamy and nice when you blend it in I, I don't love the applicator. I feel like this is something that I would normally just kind of want to draw onto my cheeks, but I find that it's probably better or best if you pick this up with a, like a sponge or, or a brush first and then apply to your cheeks. And honestly, I felt like there was kind of a film on top of it that you kind of had to like work through before the product was a little bit more emollient and more creamy upon application. It was a little bit stiffer when I first opened this product. So I'm not a huge fan of this. 
it's really really hard to judge aside from the feeling that I got that it just wasn't my my favorite looking on my skin because the shade was just so wrong and maybe I'll try for a lighter shade because I do hear that this gets good reviews it just really really didn't work well for me it didn't really look like I had done anything on my cheeks so it's just not a recommendation from me unfortunately. Next I want to go through eyeshadows. So BH Cosmetics recently launched two new sets of eyeshadows. One was kind of a play on the travel series where they came out with five quads and then they launched a different set that I did not pick up. So BH Cosmetics filed for bankruptcy last year and then sometime earlier this year Makeup Revolution announced that they were purchasing the company. So when they teased us with some new releases, um, I knew that I was going to pick them up and give them a shot. I have done a dedicated video on these palettes and the quality is absolutely terrible. It is not the same BH Cosmetics quality. They were very powdery, extremely powdery. I, have, I don't have any other eyeshadows in my entire collection that are this powdery and the pigmentation is almost zero. I could barely build up the shades on this to create an eye look and I tried using both um, the Malibu and the Miami palettes. They were so, so bad. I don't have any quality eyeshadows this bad in my entire collection. So I was very, very sad to see that BH Cosmetics reformulated. I was thinking that the one reason that Makeup Revolution would want to purchase them is because they were so good at formulating their eyeshadows. And so why they allowed that to escape them in their next release really, really baffles me. So these are a huge no for me, huge pass cannot recommend these. Do not pick these up. These are not good quality. Next, I picked up a new Viseart palette, the Soleil La Plage. This is not a new release. I believe this came out last summer, but I thought it would be a really fun color story for summer. I liked this pop of blue. Um, I love Viseart quality shadows. I just think that they perform really well and they were having a sale, so I picked this up. I can recommend Viseart a 10 out of 10. I thought this color story was very cute, so enjoyed that. One palette that I really, really did not enjoy, and this is what I was talking about with the Sephora collection, is that the one thing that I think Sephora collection does, does not do well is their eyeshadows. So I picked up this S Clean eyeshadow palette. They say this is a clean, bouncy eyeshadow formula. So it's a very neutral palette. I did only pick it up to do a full face, but it is some of the worst shadows that I have tried. They're easy to pick up on a swatch with your finger, but they are not easy to apply with a brush. It's almost like you have to wet the brush to get anything to show up. Most of their shadows perform in my experience in that way. They're almost formulated exactly the same. I'm just not a fan of them. I have had other eyeshadow palettes from the Sephora collection in the past and I have just decluttered them because they just really, really don't perform the way that I want to. I think that they would perform a little bit better if you applied them just using your finger because they swatch okay with just finger application. But when you try and pick them up on a brush, it's, it's almost no pigmentation at all. So I cannot recommend that. I do not like Sephora collection eyeshadows. Another eyeshadow palette that I picked up and used quite a bit in the month of August was the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette. So this again is by no means a new release, but they were having a sale on a lot of the, on the Natasha Denona website plus on Sephora. So I picked this up. I thought this would be a great color story for summer and into fall. And I have been wanting to build my Natasha Denona collection. So I had no issues with any of the mattes in this particular palette. However, I did find that some of the lighter shimmers were not as pigmented as some of the darker ones. They didn't pick up on a swatch even as well as some of the darker ones. So this particular one was kind of a, a lighter shimmer. It just didn't have as much pigmentation as this particular like gold right here. So I was having a little bit of trouble getting it to build up on my eye, but all of the mattes blended beautifully. I love this color story. This is a very expensive palette normally. I think this retails for $129 and I think I got it for $69.50. So it was significantly discounted and I think that it still is. So I would say that it's a good palette to add to your Natasha Denona collection. Again, I did not find consistency with every single one of the shimmers, but the mattes performed beautifully, blended beautifully, great pigmentation, no patchiness. Another eyeshadow palette I tried in the month of August was from She Glam. It's the Centuries palette. Now the color story is pretty nice on here, but everything was very minimal, very lackluster. There wasn't a huge amount of pigmentation in the mattes. 
The shimmers are almost like satin shimmers, which is okay. That's what you get a lot in the Vizzy Art shadows. I didn't find that they were very pigmented. I just thought that this was kind of a very middle of the road palette. And I have quite a few other palettes that are more affordable that I prefer over this quality. So while I would not say it's bad, I just wouldn't say that this is a run out and get. It just didn't have anything that some of my even drugstore palettes don't already offer. And some of my drugstore palettes perform better than this one. So that is not a recommendation for me. That is the only She Glam eyeshadow formula that I have tried, but I would say that that's probably not their best selling product. Another eyeshadow palette that I tried in the month of August that I really, really disliked was the Kathleen Lights and Il Maquillage Disco palette. So this not only came broken when it arrived in several different ways, I found that the matte shadows in the brown shades were extremely patchy and I did not like that. I saw a lot of other tutorials where people had pretty good success with these, but that just wasn't the case for me. This shade right here came completely broken. This one is loose and fell out when I was showing it in a different video. These two are very, very loose and these darker shades at the bottom here were so patchy on me, I really couldn't create a look that just was exemplary, just stood out. It was very, very minimal palette for $72. Again, I have other things that are more affordable or the drugstore that perform better than this did. And while I think the shimmers in this were really good, I just have a lot of shimmers that do similar things. I mean, BH Cosmetics old formulation is a better shimmer formula than this one. And this is a $72 palette. So not a recommendation for me. I just feel like if you're gonna put out a $72 palette, there really should be something stand out about it as opposed to I formulated a color story that is really gonna be neutral. And it wasn't just that the package got beat around in shipping. These shimmer shades were so loosely pressed in the pan that they were just falling out of my palette. So it was just poorly constructed. I was not a fan of that. I'm going to declutter it and I'm very displeased with my purchase. I did try two other smaller shadows this summer from Glossier. These were the monochromes. This is the Essential Eyeshadow Trios. These are kind of all like the same shade, but they come in different formulas. So you get a matte, you get a satin, and you get a shimmer. Now, I think that the idea of this kind of one and done monochromed look is really nice. Um, these mattes were performed terribly. This was almost no pigmentation whatsoever. It took a lot to build and build and build. I thought the shimmer formula was pretty nice, but these were $22 a piece. So for $22, I want all three to perform very well. Um, and that's just not what I was finding. Not a recommendation for me on those. So I have two mascaras here that I want to talk about. The first one was the Lancome. This is the Late 8 Hypnos Mascara. Now when I first tried it, I really did like it, but then I think like the stopper or something came out of it because all of a sudden like it just got super chunky and it was getting all over me and uh, I don't know what was going on I don't know why that happened I didn't find any issue with like the pigmentation or anything I thought that it was a pretty wet formula but because it was just absolutely so messy my lashes were just coming out chunky and I was like having to clean up the brush too much really to just apply it so it quickly turned on me and it became very, very messy inside of the actual bottle itself. So this one I'm not a fan of and I was actually really sad about it because I'm a huge Lancome mascara fan. I have been for years and I thought that this one would be very different and more like volumizing than the Tint Idole mascara that is a more lengthening formula, but I really cannot recommend this. This was not my favorite mascara. One that I really do recommend is the Fantasize Mascara from One Size. I got a mini in this because I wanted to save my money if it wasn't gonna work for me. But I am very pleased that I picked this up. This is a very, very pigmented formula. It comes off extremely black on my lashes. I love it. It's super wet, but it doesn't take too long to dry down. It doesn't flake on me. It isn't difficult to remove in the evening. And I believe that it actually curls my lashes. It was one of the very first things that I noticed when I put this on was that my lashes looked really curled and I was really, really shocked and I attribute it to this mascara and I just could not stop using it over the month of August because I loved it so much. I do want to 
purchase the full size in this. I'm a huge fan. I really haven't heard many people talking about this, but I think this is a tremendous launch from one size. Very, very pleased with this. So this is a huge recommendation for me. So next, I wanna go over lip products. I have tried quite a few lip products over the month of August. So there were two new lip liners that I purchased that I really gave a decent shot to. The first one was the Rare Beauty. This was the Kind Words Matte Lip Liner. And I actually really liked this. Um, I thought that it was a good formula, that it was pretty creamy. I really liked this color and I thought it stayed a decent amount of time. So for a lip liner, I thought it was decent. I did purchase one for the Sephora collection and this is the lip liner to go. It is just a mini. I'm not sure what made me purchase this, but it is just your regular pencil that you sharpen. So it is the wood pencil format, but this is the creamiest pencil lip liner that I own. I don't have many pencils. I have like a couple from NYX and I think uh, one or two other brands, but this is the creamiest pencil formula lip liner that I have in my entire collection and I love it. I, I think that this is like the tiniest little 90s throwback lip liner, but it's fantastic. It's great. I think this was like $7, so it is pretty pricey for kind of what you're getting, but the formula on this was just so good, so good. I really enjoyed this. So now moving on into lip products. I did buy the Rare Beauty Kind Words Matte Lipstick and it honestly was not my favorite. I got it in the shade, the same as the lip liner in the shade Humble. So it was a pretty drying matte formula. I know that it was matte, but I have a lot of matte formulas in my collection because I'm a huge fan of the matte formula in like a bullet or even a, li a liquid lip. So I like to test a lot of them out, but this was too drying on me and I didn't find that it was a long lasting matte formula. I have a lot of others in my collection that are not as uncomfortable. They don't accentuate my lip lines quite as much and they last a little bit longer than this particular matte formula. So I wasn't a huge fan of this. I really did prefer the lip liner over the matte lipstick. Another one that I absolutely did not like was the new lip tint from e.l.f. So this is in the shade Pinkies Up and I did mention this in another video that this is a shade that's really close to my actual like lip color and so it felt cool putting it on but you couldn't tell that anything was there it just looked like I didn't apply anything to my lip but maybe like a little bit of shine but then the shine didn't stay so it was just a really weird formulation I didn't understand like it's supposed to stain your lips because it's a lip stain but it just didn't like it didn't really stain it that much and even though they took a risk in kind of making a more like mauve tone and a lip stain that's really natural color for a lot of like fair skinned people, it just, it just didn't do anything. I didn't think that it stained my lips. The gloss was kind of weird and faded after like a second. I just was not a fan of this. Cannot recommend that. I did try a bullet from Essence. This is one of their semi-matte bullet lipsticks and I was blown away by this particular formula. It is a very, very creamy, very moussey, very bouncy formula. It felt to me like one of those cream liquid lipsticks, but in a bullet, and this was only $3.99. I picked it up at CVS as I was walking through, wasn't really sure what to expect. I've tried one of Essence's lip products before, but it was just the gloss, but this was so comfortable and creamy and didn't accentuate my lip lines. I loved this. This was a great affordable drugstore option. So I picked up three from ColourPop. Actually, it was four, but I only have three here. I do have one in my car. This is the Blotted Lip from ColourPop, and I think these are a really good formula. When they say blotted lip, that's exactly what they look like on. They're almost like you put lipstick on and then you blotted your lips. So it's like this semi-matte formula, but it's very comfortable. It's a very bouncy formula. It's not overly hydrating or anything. It's just something to give your lips a little bit of pigmentation. But again, it almost looks like a lip stain, but really just like you apply the lipstick and then you blotted your lips. They, they named these appropriately and for what they claim to do, they did a really good job. So I have been enjoying these. I kind of had to like go and gather these so that I could do this video because they were all over between downstairs, my purse, my car, so I have liked these. Again, not the most hydrating formula. It's not intended to be, but it is very comfortable. Next, I tried the Ultra Lip from Glossier. This is 
an overpriced item for what it is. It's just like what they claim is kind of a hybrid formula where it's supposed to be like a gloss, a tint, and a lip balm in one. And I think this retails for like $18 or something. So for the price, it's just meh. It's not an overly hydrating lip formula. It does give a little bit of a tint, so it's nice, but I have drugstore like lip tints and like glosses and things like that that do different things that are just better performing than this that just wasn't revolutionary for the price so it was just kind of middle of the road it's not that it's not nice it just doesn't do anything revolutionary and for what it costs it's not worth it one product that I did like from Glossier was the lip gloss. This originally was something that I found extremely sticky and it is marketed on its description as being a non-sticky formula, but I absolutely find this a super sticky formula. However, the stickiness doesn't last, but what makes it so nice is that this formula stays forever and ever and ever. It is a very, very different formula to the Fenty Gloss Balm, but it lasts the same amount of time as the Fenty Gloss Balm. It stays glossy an extremely long amount of time. And I've been using this to like top my lips constantly. I just, I've been leaving this out and using this like every single day. So I really do like it. It's almost like half gone at this point. It's all the way down here. And it does provide a little bit of a tint. So while I would say it doesn't make good on the claims that it's not a sticky formula, it's very sticky. The stickiness doesn't last, but I think that stickiness makes it adhere to your lips and last a little bit longer on your lips as a gloss. I picked up one more shade of the L'Oreal Paris. I'm not sure what these are called. I did have this one in my collection already, and this one is a new shade for me, and I so I can't really say it's like a new try-on for formulation. However, these have become some of my favorite, favorite lip product formulas that I've been reaching for in the month of August. I've been putting this in my pocket. I've been putting this in my purse. I've been going everywhere with this. So this is a very, very unique formula. What it does is it tints your lips but it has a glossy finish that stays extremely glossy for hours I, I can't explain it I don't understand how they formulated a lip product to look like this where it actually is like a lipstick with a high shine gloss that lasts so long I don't know what they did here but it's fantastic everyone should run out and grab these and try these at least once I also mention these because I have two lip products here that are very similar or they were formulated to be very similar. So the first one was the Superstay Vinyl Ink from Maybelline. Now this took me a couple of times to actually really get used to and say that I liked because initially I wasn't really sure about this product. I put it on and it was a little bit chunky at first. Like when it dried down, it definitely like left kind of like a film over my lips that sort of peeled off. But what it was intended to do, I think, is be kind of this matte under, for, like formula that was matte underneath, but gave a gloss on top. And I think that it took me a couple of times to figure out how to use it, but it did work pretty well. I would just say that the L'Oreal does a better job at really being kind of like this stay for hours lip tint and have a huge amount of gloss on your lips that just lasts hours and hours and hours without explanation. I could see that they were trying to do something similar with this, but I prefer this formula better. Also, I picked up the new Urban Decay. This is the liquid lip color. Now, I definitely think they were trying to do with this what L'Oreal achieved with this. What they did here was it was supposed to be a matte liquid lip with a high gloss. I just don't think they did a really good job. The gloss on this fades away pretty quickly, almost instantly. This is like second longest lasting, and this is number one longest lasting. It, I literally cannot explain how they formulated this. I would say that Urban Decay was definitely going for this formulation, but did not nail it out of the park. I'm not a huge fan of the color anyway, uh, but the formulation just isn't my favorite overall. I think it's overpriced, and I think L'Oreal did a 10 times better job with this formula. I did pick up a lip crayon from 
House Labs. It's pretty nice. I have a lot of lip crayons in my collection that I've enjoyed. I think some from NARS and Bite Beauty are more comfortable than this. I'd say this is a pretty good matte lip crayon formula, but it's definitely something that you have to top with gloss because it definitely accentuates your lip lines. But it gives a good lasting, um, it gives a good amount of pigmentation that lasts a pretty good amount of time. So it's nice. I would just say that there's probably others like from the drugstore or cheaper options than this. This was not a revolutionary thing by any means. I did pick up one of Sephora collections glossed and I thought that this was a really really high shine gloss. I did really really enjoy this. I would say it's not the longest lasting gloss and there are drugstore ones that are better but it was pretty nice. One that I did really really like and this is the final product for today was the new KVD Hyper Light Everlasting Liquid Lipstick. So KVD's original Everlasting Liquid Lipstick was one of my favorite long lasting like matte liquid lips formulas in all of my collection. So I was skeptical about trying this new Hyperlite, but they definitely live up to the claims. It's a lighter weight liquid lip long lasting formula. It's very nice. It's almost nice enough that you don't have to like top it with a gloss. I usually do with like matte lipsticks or even liquid lips, but I would say it's comfortable enough that you wouldn't have to if you didn't want to. It's it's a really good formulation. I really enjoyed this. I can tell that it's lighter weight than their original formulation, but it's also very nice. I like them both fantastic job. So that was it for all of the products that I tried at the very end of July and all of August. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I am so out of breath, so I am done. I'm going to turn the camera off now and catch my breath. I hope you enjoyed. hope you consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you again. Bye.